All right. What is up, everybody? Super excited for today's video. Stock market is on fire, okay? Just another great day um, after the recent CPI comes in lower than expected. Uh, the market is still rallying, okay? We can take a look at the positions that I've got uh, right here. We look at the daily change, right? Lots of big moves, okay? Uh, in this video, we're gonna break down uh, my portfolio, all right? This is the, uh, started off as the 50K portfolio, right? It recently just hit 60K. Uh, we're going to see if we can take this to 100K in this bear market, right? And so we're going to go over some of the stocks that I'm looking at. Uh, we're going to go over the high dividend stocks that I have. Um, you know, if we take a look at the portfolio and we look at the asset allocation, 63% um, of this portfolio is tied up into dividend stocks, all right? Um, there's a big reason for that. You know, uh, you need to have some extra ways to be able to create some passive income, especially in these rough bear markets, okay? You can take a look at the sector allocation as well. Um, and then we'll go over the option strategies that I'm using as well, right? Uh, we have the wheel strategy currently running. OK, uh, and what that is, is basically if you own 100 shares or more, you can sell covered calls. And if you want to purchase 100 shares of a company, you can sell cash secured puts. Right. So using that strategy to uh, gain a little bit more money, uh, you know, passively. Right. I was able to collect four hundred and thirty eight dollars uh, last time I ran the wheel. OK, and it's November 11th. So a lot of these contracts are going to expire. This one right here. These right here. OK, these right here and this one okay so now i'll be able to go in and you know run the wheel again um and you know be look be on the lookout for you know what opportunities i see whether i want to sell some more calls or some more cash secured puts and generate some more passive income right i was able to generate 438 dollars uh in this portfolio whenever the last time i did that so that's been something nice uh, that you can really just add on. Now, if you take a look at how much the portfolio is up, right, we're actually up 23% uh, on the year, right? Now, this is not 23% of, you know, the 50K that was invested. That's actually only out of the 38K that was initially invested, right? So that's the book value of, you know, all the stocks that I purchased uh, in this portfolio. Uh, currently, it's at 50K. We have about 12,421 in cash in there as well. Uh, and that cash is, you know, the reason there's such a large cash balance is because, you know, you need to have cash to be able to sell those cash secured puts and run the wheel, right? So, um, if we take a look, right, again, just amazing, amazing day across the market, right? I had two stocks that were red today, barely even red. We had uh, down 1% on iClean, okay? That is the clean energy ETF. Um, clean energy is something that a lot of people are invested in, and it's something that, you know, has a lot of attention of, you know, politicians and things like that. Uh, you know, they're looking to make and find ways to actually make, you know, clean, renewable energy uh, and, you know, hopefully make that the future. Right. Um, so, you know, I do have energy. I have clean energy right there. And then I also have Gush right here, which is the uh, oil and gas bullish ETF. Right. That's actually my biggest position. And it's also the one I'm the most up on as well. Right. And the reason being for that was you know, when typically in a bear market, okay, one of the things that leads to signs of a bear market is energy outperforming tech, right? And outperforming the rest of the market. You know, I originally sold um, pretty much every stock I had in November or December of 2021, right? I just didn't like how anything was looking. Um, and then that's right around the time when I actually created this portfolio. Uh, and, you know, Gush has just been outperforming very, very well almost at 100% gains on that, okay? So if we come down here and look at the sector allocation, um, energy as a whole is over 50%, uh, about 50% of my uh, portfolio, right? We have energy itself, and then we have clean energy. Clean energy has also been performing very, very well. You know what stock recently just made all-time highs? Enphase, right? And that's a solar company, that's clean energy. Um, so, you know, energy has is really almost about 50 percent of this portfolio. I will change things up eventually in the future. Um, but, you know, you don't need to fix something that's not broken. Right. And so that strategy has been working really well. Uh, 21 percent in consumer discretionaries. Right. Um, that's that's something that's a little bit defensive. Right. And then more of value stocks versus growth stocks. Um, if you listen to CNBC and things like that, you're constantly hearing them say, okay, well, the healthcare sector, the energy sector, consumer discretionary, uh, consumer staples, things like those. Um, 
you know, those are kind of stocks that you want to be in, right? And if we look at my consumer discretionary stocks, we have Jumia, okay? Um, now, Jumia is a lot more of a growth stock and a tech stock, but technically it still is a consumer discretionary. Uh, that's the sector it's listed under under the New York Stock Exchange. And then we have Kimberly Clark right here, okay? KMB, consumer discretionary. And this is also a dividend stock for me, right? Um, this one pays, we can go ahead and look over here at the dividend info, right? And this one pays 464 uh, per share, right? That is the dividend payout. And next week, we're going to be getting a payout from this, right? So that's just more passive income uh, we're going to be able to use, right? Annually, it's going to pay about $232 uh, with a 3.64% uh, yield on the dividend, okay? Um, so that's kind of why I have those positions. And then the rest are, most of them are, are going to be tech, right? I do want to go into one other position before I do that. And that's going to be ticker symbol PHO. Um, water, okay, is in my opinion, right? And none of this is like meant to be financial advice. It's pretty much just all my opinion uh, and just breaking down, you know, the thought process behind building this portfolio. But you know, water, we're expected to go on a global water shortage after the year 2025, right? And so you have to start preparing for that, right? And, you know, if you look at what some of the billionaires are doing, right, they're buying land and they're buying water, okay? They're just buying tons and tons of water or buying tons and tons of water companies. And so PHO is the Invesco Water Resources ETF. So, you know, I don't have to go and pick individual water stocks. Um, you know, it's very hard to pick individual stocks. Uh, so, you know, I do have a lot of ETFs, right? Like Gush is an ETF. It's a bullish ETF. It's a handful of, you know, oil and gas companies. We have the Invesco Water Resources ETF. I have Spy G right here. And I really like this one a lot for two reasons, okay? It's it's almost similar to the NASDAQ um, because it's really almost like the top 100 growth companies in the S&P 500 because a lot of stocks in the S&P 500, they're not really performing too well fundamentally. But what it is is that so many people over the years have just gotten into indexing, right? And averaging into the indexes that certain stocks are really just, you know, only getting inflows because they're contained within the S&P 500. And so SPY-G, um, you know, again, one of the reasons I like it is really because it's the growth stocks in the S&P 500. Uh, and it is a little bit more risky because of that. But what I really like, okay, is the current price, right? It's $54 a share versus the S&P 500. Right now, if you buy the SPY ETF, that's, those are about $400 a share. So it's much easier to own 100 shares of this, right? If you look, I own 100 shares, and now I can sell covered calls against this. Um, and, you know, it only cost me about $5,000 to do that um, versus, you know, I would need $40,000 uh, to own 100 shares of the SPY ETF and then sell covered calls against that, right? So that's kind of the methodology behind that. Um, we have NNDM, right? Nano Dimension. Um, you know, this is a tech stock, all right? One of the reasons I have this one is because if you look at the fundamentals on it, um, and again, none of this is financial advice, but they do have, you know, they have more cash than their current market cap. Okay. So there's a couple different reasons that that can happen. Um, and that doesn't mean that the company is going to be able to hold on to that cash uh, in the future and, you know, be able to see the market cap go back up to there. But, you know, when I got into the shares, it was like a $600 billion market cap and they had 1.2 or $1.3 billion just in cash. Um, so that was kind of the methodology behind that. Um, but, you know, it is still a small section uh, or percentage of the portfolio, about 1%. We have BKKT. Uh, BKKT is my crypto exposure, okay? Um, I got about 1% of the portfolio in cryptocurrency related stocks. And the reason I chose BKKT um, is, again, because I wanted some exposure to crypto. Uh, I'm not super bullish on it currently at the moment, but, you know, long term, I do think that blockchain technology, you know, is useful, right? It has many use cases. Um, and we really just have to get through the regulatory process, uh, you know, to really see trillions of dollars flow into cryptocurrency. Um, you know, many of the top companies that you already think of are already, you know, using blockchain technology, whether it's Google, whether it's IBM, whether it's LG, um, you know, even, even companies you wouldn't even think, right? Like Walmart is in there. Tons and tons of companies are already using blockchain, um, but, you know, the regulation isn't there for them to be able to necessarily, you know, dump trillions of dollars into it and use it on a daily basis, right?
Um, but really it's just software at the end of the day. And the reason I chose BKKT is because the company, right? The parent company of BKKT is ICE and ICE owns the NYSE, the New York Stock Exchange. So if there was going to be a crypto related stock that is positioned well for crypto regulation, um, you know, I believe that BKKT is one of them. Okay. Um, what else do we need to touch on? We touched on Jumia a little bit. Fubo. Okay. Fubo is a little bit of a risky play, but you know, you got to have some of those. Okay. You got to take some risk uh, to be able to make money. I am down. If you look at my current percentage gain, I'm down 9% total on that. Um, but you know, that's a really speculative growth play, right? And there's a lot of hype and, you know, potential on that one, right? Like really, I'm just kind of looking to see if we're going to be able to get a short squeeze. Okay. There's, there's lots and lots of potential um, and hype, especially on YouTube and stuff like that. So I don't mind, you know, making a, a little bit of speculative, um, you know, investments in this portfolio uh, and Fubo is one of them, um, you know, and then if you look into their books, right, they, they are doing pretty well. Okay. They're not perfect, but you know, their recent earnings calls, they were able to exceed expectations um, and, you know, things don't look too bad. Now, BNGO is going to be a biotech play. Uh, this is bio nanogenomics. And we see here, I own about 200 shares of bingo, average cost of 210. Uh, we're up 26% on that position. I did want to have a lot more um, shares of bingo, but unfortunately, it, it kind of just slipped my mind and started running up too much. Um, you know, I'm not looking to really, you know, if I'm really up on a position, uh, I don't want to buy at the top necessarily. Um, you know, I'm really just looking to add to positions uh, when they are cheaper, right? Cheaper than the price that I got them in. And so one of the ways you can do that again is by selling cash secured puts. Uh, so I'm doing that on a lot of stocks that I want to own at a cheaper price. So that way I can name the price that I want to buy them at and also collect some passive income uh, just for, you know, choosing what price I want to buy these stocks at. All right now, guilt has been... Um, one of my worst positions, right, down 28%, basically 29% on that one. It's Galat Satellite Networks. Um, you know, I do think that they have a lot of potential in the future, but telecommunication stocks have been hit really, really hard uh, in this bear market, and that sector as a whole isn't doing too well. Um, so no surprise there. Um, it's not a huge percentage of the portfolio. It's 1.5% of the portfolio. I have MJ. Now, MJ has been doing really good since I bought in. Uh, we're up about 20% almost on that one. And basically, that is a cannabis ETF right now. The reason I got into that is because cannabis is... You know, it's on the verge of being federally legalized. We're not there yet, but, um, you know, it's it's coming, right? It's going to come eventually. And so it's a very small position in the portfolio, 1.1%. Um, and, you know, just w I will be looking to add more to that, but it's also something that goes up and down a lot, right? And it is kind of like a little bit of a manipulated sector. Uh, you'll see it pump really hard. Anytime there's news, um, cannabis related, and then a lot of times that momentum will die away and it will just dump just as quick, right? Now, over here, we have METV. This is the Round Hill Ball Metaverse ETF. Now, I know everybody's thinking the metaverse is over with and who cares about the metaverse, um, but it's really not so much about making a huge bet on the metaverse by purchasing the uh, metaverse ETF, but rather being able to own a bundle of some of the top tech companies, right? If you look at some of the companies in there, you know, you have Microsoft, right? You have NVIDIA, um, you know, you, ha you have some of the top, you know, basically tech companies bundled into one ETF. And again, um, the, you know, the price of these shares is 780 a piece. It's easier to own 100 shares of this and be able to sell covered calls versus owning 100 shares of Google, right? Or owning 100 shares of Microsoft. You know, it's, it's a lot more challenging um, you know, to raise that capital. So this is a nice way to be able to have some good exposure to some of the top tech companies there are out there, um, you know, whether it's chips or whether it's software, um, you know, you do get some good exposure in this ETF, the METV ETF. Now, Zim, Zim is my top dividend stock. Um, and I am looking to grow this position just because of merely how much it pays in dividends. If we look, the current yield is 100%. So, you know, I'm getting $3,252 off my dividends for this one, right? It pays $27.10 a share. Currently, uh, it's at $27.08 a share. 
So, you know, that's that it's a safety net, right? So it's like, all right, well, this thing could go down, right? Like, let's say it goes down 50% in the next year. Well, I know that, you know, out of the 3,057 I invested in there with this portfolio, I'm going to be able to collect $3,252. So that's the main reason I got it. And hey, if it happens to go up and go green and I'm able to, you know, also get a percentage gain on it, then that's even better. But I do know that, you know, typically high stocks that are paying really high insane dividends like that um, can be very risky because, you know, there's a reason that they're paying such a high dividend. Maybe they're tight, right? Maybe their money is real tight and they really need to raise capital. So what they're doing is they're trying to attract a lot of investors by paying a really high dividend in hopes to use that capital to invest it back in the company um, and, you know, really help the company out. So we'll see how that goes. If you look at the 90 day chart, this is the most flat stock I have, right? Like take a look here, you know, we can see that it's basically just been straight flat, just like this, right? Everything else has been up and down, up and down, up and down. And it's no secret we're in a bear market, right? So, you know, we would love to see all of these going like this up, but we know the situation. It's all about being patient and buying at the prices down here and trying to ride that momentum up, right? Versus, you know, buying up here at the hype or buying up here at the hype, um, you know, but yeah, I mean, just look, look for the past, like 45 days, this thing has been pretty much flat, right? Nothing else has been that flat. We take a look at this one and this one's actually going up. This one's going down. This one's a little bit of a U, right? This one's been performing really well. This is energy, the gush one. Um, but like, just Zim is stuck, man. Zim is really, really stuck. So it would be nice if this one could get a breakout and, you know, I could get a nice percentage gain on top of the really nice uh, dividend payout. But if not, you know, I'll just be looking to add more shares and, you know, add more dividend uh, income to this portfolio. All right. So that's it. Appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing updates on this portfolio every single week uh, and you can watch it grow and possibly sink, but been doing really good with this portfolio. Um, the main reason is, you know, again, that overweight in energy, 44% in regular energy, 4% in clean energy. It's about 50% of the portfolio is overweight in energy, um, you know, and about 62% of this portfolio is in dividend stocks. Uh, so, you know, those have been the main things that have really been keeping this portfolio alive, along with uh, selling options, right? Selling, using the wheel strategy in particular, selling covered calls and cash secure puts.